so in this video we're going over the AQA additional physics topic of forces and elasticity and essentially elasticity is the ability of an object to resume its original shape so go back to the same shape it was after being stretched or compressed and the way in which it changes shape is due to forces so a force needs to be applied to change the shape of an el elastic object. And the forces can either stretch an elastic object or compress it. So for example, an elastic object which is stretched is a catapult. So you can see here it's flaccid and loose, while as it can be stretched. And with a bouncy ball, when it is dropped, as it lands, it changes shape when it hits the floor because the floor does work on the bouncy ball as does the weight of the bouncy ball. And the force leads to the object storing something known as elastic potential energy. So, as you know, the objects will eventually release and, chain, and there will be an energy transformation. So, for example, with the catapult and the bouncy ball, this elastic potential energy will be transferred into kinetic energy as the bouncy ball resumes its original shape and bounces away, and the catapult resumes its original shape and fires something. Next, we're going to look at Hooke's Law. And Hooke's Law is something you may need to use in your exam. And what it states is force, measured in newtons, is the spring constant, which we'll go into in a, mid, in a minute, measured in newtons per metre, times extension, measured in metres. And you won't see it like this. It will actually be written more like this. So force, the spring constant is represented by a lowercase k, and extension is represented by a lowercase e. And the equation only works if the elastic limit isn't exceeded. And the elastic limit is essentially the amount to which the object can be stretched before being, not being able to return to its original length. For example, if you think about an elastic band, if you were to stretch it as far as possible, it snaps or it starts to loosen and not return to its original shape. And the same thing happens to our skin as we age, which is why we get wrinkles. So the force is essentially the force applied. So if we were thinking about our catapult, it would be the amount of force needed to pull the catapult back. And the extension is the increase in length after the elastic object is stretched. So if we go back to our catapult, the extension would be the, this increase in length here. So how far, how long the elastic is after being stretched. And the spring constant is essentially something different. It is different from all materials, which is a bit confusing because it's called a constant. You might think it's the same, but it's different from all materials, but it is constant if you're using the same material in different experiments, which is why it's called a constant. And it's worked out using an experiment like this one. So you can see we have a sort of desk and we have our elastic object hanging off the desk and you slot slotted masses or weights onto the end of the elastic object and these apply more downward force which causes the object to stretch more. And you measure the length after each slotted mass has been added and you plot a graph like this. So the force is essentially proportional to the number of slotted masses you've added and the extension is the length to which the elastic object increases. So that's how you plot this graph and essentially the extension is the gradient, so k. And you may be asked to do, to do questions on working out this gradient. And we know how to do this because we've done it with other similar graphs, such as speed, 
distance and time. And essentially to work out K, all you need to do is take the extension and divide it by the force. So K equals E over F over E. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you.